Hey everybody, um, time for another using Emacs video. Um, this is a package that I just started using, so um, and but it's very useful. And um, so excuse me if I get some of the keys wrong, um, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, this is specifically going back to McGit and dealing with um, with Git repositories and GitHub's. And this is particularly for dealing with things like issues and pull requests. And in my case, mostly dealing with um, with issues. Um, uh, so um, I have this repo here, and this is a little repo I was using for my classes uh, to show them some stuff, you know, to show them how to use these things, these tools. Uh, so I've got some closed issues here. Now, if you're not really familiar with GitHub issues, um, go. I have a, I'll have a link in the blog post for this. I wrote a post and made a video for to show how you can use issues for. Um, just for communicating with with one's students um, and it's a really really useful um, mechanism and the other thing that is for pull requests even though I don't use pull requests um, with my students as much or even for myself as much because I'm just kind of working in my own repos um, and so basically what I want to show you is dealing with um, with forge uh, so Magit forge uh, which lets us work with these things so so let's let's start let's go to our configuration so um, go to my configuration file here, and I've got Magit, and I don't think I have it set up in here. Um, this is stuff for smerge mode, which I haven't shown. Um, I use, or Magit by default is a little side note, uses smerge. Um, it can also use edif for its merge conflicts, but smerge has the most god-awful key bindings um, ever created and so I found this Hydra online uh, to make it a little bit easier um, yeah so let's go to the forge and so use package uh, forge and just ensure true so um, we're just I just did control X control E to do that and that should install it um, it's compiling the SQLite uh, binary, uh, so I guess it uses SQLite, which I love. SQLite is a library that implements a subset of SQL, and so if you're just doing some really lightweight SQL stuff, and you don't want to have to install, you know, um, Postgres, which is my SQL server of choice, or MySQL or another one, uh, you can do that. So let's just go to, let's save this. And let's just go to Magit, and we will we modify that. So we'll stage that and added forge, um, do that, and we will push it up to origin. And this has nothing to do with our project, but uh, but I figured I might as well just use Magit for that. And I'll just kill the buffer, and we'll quit from that. And uh, I'm just going to kill all the buffers so we start out clean. Um, now. Going with Magit, I also want to say before I go further, um, I, I, I used it on and off for a long time, but I never really 100% bought into it. And um, until I had this realization, and um, I had this, and I talked about this when I finally did my Magit video, is... I don't look at it anymore as a Git interface, but more as a Git dashboard. Um, you know, so it's just up there looking at the status of your project, and and that made all the difference for me. So anyway, let's go back to here, and I need a repo to work on. So I, I'm using this little one here. So uh, again, it doesn't matter so much, but I'm going to clone this, and let's go to the terminal or a terminal. There we go. I'm in the temp directory. And nothing really interesting here, but I am going to um, git clone, and then I will paste. It already is there. Uh, what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to, I guess I played with this before. And I'm going to, I wanted to get rid of, I want to get rid of that. Can't type. Yes, through rm-r. Okay, I got rid of it. So one of those I typed it right. Um, no, I'm still in it. Okay, rm-r lab. There we go. Okay, good. It's gone. All right, so now we're going to get clone. And we're here for that. And I'm not going to work in the terminal anymore, but um, I wanted to, I had to clone it first um, so I could work with this. I'm not sure if there's a way of doing this with. Um, with uh, with Git uh, with Magit, but I'm going to go into 
probably should not be here. I'm going to go into here. Uh, temp. Why is it not going to root? Um, let's go to messages. Here we go. Uh, temp lab seven there. And let's go to loop CPP uh, just to be in a file. And let's bring in, bring up my Git. And you'll notice I've got pull requests and issues. If I don't have them, I can do forge pull. And I think that's, um, I think that's what I do to start with this. But since I did this beforehand, let's go here to the getting started. Um, and it says here, yeah, just do a forge pull which is FY from the Get status page. So F, and you'll see here to pull the topics. And it pulls everything. And now all of a sudden, I've got all my commit stuff in before, and you know, I can look at my logs, like whatever. Um, but I've got my pull requests, and I've got my issues. And um, if I hit Enter here, I can bring up the issues this way. So I'm going to, if I remember correctly, I think it's Control-C, Control-N, over the issues tab and that says I'm creating a new issue. So now I'm going to say uh, this is issue from Emacs and this is an Emacs created issue with some text, whatever. Control C, Control C. And now I have four issues. This is an issue from Emacs. And let's go back over here reload the page and I have an issue. Now I have other issues there but the other issues are closed. This one's an open issue. At the main at the same time let's say this is an issue from GitHub pro GitHub. And I wrote this on GitHub. And um, I'm going to put a label on to this. Uh, let's say this is a bug. And we are going to submit the new issue. And I'm going to come over to here, and I'm going to do an FY, and I have my issue from GitHub, which is a bug. I got my issue from Emacs. If I hit enter over this, I've got my issue, and I can edit this, and I think I can even do, if I do control C E, I can edit this, control C K not to change it, but I'm going to adding another comment. Let's come back up to here. Let's come over to our issues. Uh, that was our issue from Emacs. Another comment and some info from GitHub. And so I can comment there. Um, so notice that it's going to, it's not going to immediately come here, but if I go to my dashboard, I really didn't have to come back to it, and I do my forge yes, my pull, my issue from Emacs and some from GitHub. It's all there. Now I can also edit my labels. Let's say this is a, these are the, the, um, the uh, uh, labels that I have. Let's say this is an enhancement and also a question. And you'll notice here, enhancement question, bang. Um, I can make an assignee, control C, control E, and I can only assign this to Zemanski and, because I'm the only person who has access to this. I'm not going to do that. Um, but maybe, you know, so I put those, those labels there. Let's go back to my issues. This one has these. Let's go here. Let's see, can we get rid of... Um, uh, I have to figure out how to get rid of them here. Um, I, 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 I'm, the funny thing is, if I go back to here, I could get rid of them by just editing them here, but there's got to be a way to get rid of them over on GitHub as well. So, uh, But I'm not going to stress about this. But as you can see, I can add messages to this from the one from GitHub. Um, I didn't add anything yet, so why don't I come back to here? Let's come back to my issues. And this is my issue from GitHub and control C N, I added this from Emacs. Control C, control C, added it from Emacs. Now, this is the one I started on GitHub, and if I'm done with this issue, 
I can do control C, con is it control C, control E? Let's see. Um, close this issue from GitHub. Yes, I do want to close this issue from GitHub. It is now closed. So now if I go back to issues, I only have one issue because it's closed. On the other hand, I can look at these other issues like um, these are the two that I'm playing with now, but this one over here, if I hit enter here, this one is closed, but I can reopen it if I want. Uh, so let's reopen that. And it's reopened. So you see, we've got all of these options. We, we've got all this stuff we can do with issues, and we never have to leave Emacs for it. Um, there might, I haven't looked at this that much. There might be a way, um, I guess we could even change the title of this, right? Just to do that. Uh, uh, the, the key is Control C N will make a new of whatever. Um, let's actually look at these other ones uh, from GitHub. So I can't do anything there. Um, I think there are a few other keystrokes that you can be to kill a comment, um, like Control C K in certain contexts, uh, but that doesn't seem to be it here. I'm not. Let's see. Oh, C K. I have the comment there. If I want to kill it, yes, and then that'll kill it. I'm not going to bother doing that right now. But the key is Control C N to make a new of something, and Control C E to edit or do, and um, this took me a little bit to get used to, the idea that, you know, I can control C, E to edit the labels, control C, E to edit that from open to close, etc. So that's dealing with issues, but we can also deal with pull requests. So let's go back to here and let's make a new branch. So the branch is going to be from master and we're going to call this forge demo. And um, let's go to branch, check out Forge Demo. So we're now in Forge Demo. And we're going to be like, um, ooh, OK, that's a problem. Let's, I've been having problems with LSP mode, um, doing weird stuff in C++. Um, so I'm going to have to turn that off. You see, this is weird, weird, weird stuff. Um, So why don't we just go to fundamental mode? Um, added this under Forge Demo branch. Um, we are under the Forge Demo. If we want to look at our logs, we can see that we're under Forge Demo here. Um, we've got an unstaged change. So we're going to stage this. We're going to commit this. Added a comment from Forge Demo. And I'm going to push this up. So now if I go back to my code here, you'll notice that I've got Forge Demo as a new branch. Um, if I look at the code for loop.cpp, it doesn't have that comment. But if I look at that under Forge Demo, it does. So now normally what I would do is I would deal with the pull request here. I would click here on pull request. Even going back to here, uh, GitHub gives me, you know, right over here, make the pull request. Um, but instead, I'm going to go back to, um, to Emacs here, and I'm going to go back to here, and these are the pull requests that I've dealt with before. I'm just going to open one of them to show. Um, and this is a closed pull request. Um, and, well, they're all closed pull requests. The, this one closed, which had never happened. This one merged in. This one, you know, et cetera. So let's make a new pull request, control C N. The source branch is forge demo, going to the origin, and that's the default comment. Do control C, control C, as you would expect. And now I've got a new pull request. So I can go to this pull request, and I can do the same things that I wanted before. I can be like, um, I could merge it up here, but I could also be like, um, I think this needs work. You know, I can make a comment on this. So let's make a comment on this. Now I'm going to come back to Emacs, and I'm going to do my pull. Um, and notice I've got my commits. And let's pull everything down again. I 
should see. Oh, there's my comment. I think this needs work. Um, so let's say we want to comment back. Um, no, it doesn't. And there, no, it doesn't. Okay, so um, so at this point, um, we can do all of these things. Now, um, the one thing that I'm not sure about here that I haven't played with yet. So so notice that at this point, it's a lot like um, a lot like the issues. You know, I can you know edit this. I can add my labels. You know, I can assign it to someone, do review requests, all the stuff that I'd want to do with pull requests. The only thing that I can't do here is if I wanted to, whoops, control C, control E, is I could close it. Now, I don't see how I can merge this directly from here. Like I could merge this from Forge Demo to Master locally and then push it back up. And I'm pretty sure it would work, but, um, but let's close this here. And you'll see that this has been closed. And we can open it again, and we see it's opened. Uh, but here, if we just merge the pull request, um, and I guess it makes sense that you shouldn't be able to. And now I want to pull down the forge stuff again. And notice this is grayed out. Why? Because it's been merged. Um, I guess it makes a certain amount of sense that you can't do a merge. You can't accept the pull request and, and merge it in um, from Emacs if you're doing it to the repo. Um, and again, I'm sh like again, I'm sure we could have. I mean, I guess if we did this, let's um, you know, let's see about doing. Yeah, I mean. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess we could experiment. Let's see how much time we've made on this video. Yeah, it's 16 minutes, so it's a little bit on the long side now uh, for what I usually do. So we'll wrap it at this, but but as I said again, you could, you know, if you have control, you could just merge it into your local master and push it back. But I guess that it makes sense that we can't do the actual merge here because normally if you're doing a pull request to someone else's project, you don't have the access to do that. You don't have the rights to do that there. But anyway, Megit Forge. Really, really, really cool. It lets you live in Emacs and do all of this type of communication. Um, and again, if you're not really familiar, well, if you're not really familiar with, with pull requests, I'm sure there are a lot of videos out there for that. Um, uh, and if you're not familiar with issues, uh, even though I think you know we kind of showed it here, um, you can look at my previous video and post on that, which isn't under the Emacs series, but just on my blog. And that's it for today. Okay, take care.